Now, fed up with the multiple crisis situation in the country, Kasatu is hitting the streets. It's protesting against crime, unemployment, poor governance, corruption and rolling blackouts. Our reporter Aisha Ishmael is in Cape Town tracking developments there. And Letu Mluli is in Durban. Aisha, I'm going to start with you. Uh, the Kosatu march obviously going ahead in Cape Town. But how's the turn up been like? Is it good? So the march started in District 6 and we saw hundreds of people marching to the provincial parliament and now they're outside the national parliament where you can see people gathering and they're waiting for a government representative to come and receive a memorandum. Now the memorandum deals with issues that Kusatu has raised over and over again, issues about unemployment, about poverty, about corruption um, in, 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 in South Africa. Africa, and they're saying that, yes, every year they march multiple times, they don't see government moving fast enough, and they want government to know that they're not taking this lightly. But this is what Malvin De Brain from Kasatu, the secretary of Kasatu in the Western Cape, had to say to me earlier today. Kasatu is really unhappy with the slow pace of job creation in our country. We've seen the number of job losses on a daily basis. We've seen the crime in our country is out of hand in also in our province. And we are of the view that national government is doing enough, the province and the city are doing enough to fight crime in our own areas. You have seen what's happening in the corruption cases. We had the Zondo Commission, which has been now more than a year, have now submitted a recommendation a year ago. And up until today, we don't see real results. And we are saying how, why we spend millions of rands in the commissions but we don't get the results out of those commissions. And that's also one of our core issues that we are unhappy about. We've seen the high interest rates. The people, the poor, the poor, the working class are suffering because of all these costs. And you're quite correct. We marched before. And we are saying not Kosato, but we can't just march and we don't see the real results. We can also say, we can't also give government the benefit also, that there's some issues that there was improvement on some of our issues that we've raised before. But we are saying it's at a very slow pace. They should do more and speed up service delivery, speed up job creation, create an environment that so the business society can create jobs for all people in this country. Mm, but we have seen these marches before, Aisha, over and over again, in fact. Uh, what is Kasatu hoping to achieve this time? Well, Kasatu is saying that they're going to be given government timelines and they want them to act and... After handing over the memorandum, they want government to come back to them. And I think they did initially say they're giving government about two weeks to get back to them to say exactly what it is that they're going to be doing to assist workers in South Africa. But while Kosato has also said that they would have expected more people to turn out um, to come and support the strike action, they also do understand that not many people, not many workers can afford to lose a day's wages. Now, this is a protected strike, which means that people or no disciplinary action can be taken against those who have embarked on the strike action today. But let's listen again to Malvin De Brain. Memorandum is very clear. We give them 14 days within which to respond. So within 14 days, they must give us a plan on how they will address the concerns that we have raised. They must give us like short-term results medium term and long term, we're not saying that will be an open-ended memorandum. They must tell us what we'll do in the next six months, what we'll do in the next 12 months, etc. But we want real results because this can be the beginning of ongoing campaigns if we don't get the desired results out of our memorandums. All right, Aisha, let me take the viewer to Durban now where we find our other colleague, Leti Wemluli. She's covering that leg of the march. Uh, let's see where, uh, what is happening on that side. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, Kosatu obviously represents workers, but I think it's also part of the problem because it's a part of the tripartite with the governing party. Well, Masako, here in Durban, we just started marching from King Dinizulu Park all the way to the Durban City Hall. Um, the turnout is quite great. So we've seen a lot of members joining in, and we had a chance to speak to the Kosatu Deputy General Secretary a bit earlier on, 
who explained why they are taking on this march. He is saying that they are calling for the government and also the private sector to get involved in trying to solve the issues um, the country is facing, such as unemployment, the rolling blackouts, and also um, the crime in this country. I want to go and speak to a few people who are joining in this march um, and, find them, uh, and find out from them exactly why um, they are marching. Um, as you can see, the turnout is quite great. Um, we are seeing more than 500 members um, of the alliance here joining in and just basically calling for government to get in. I'm right now joined by Edwin Mkize, who is a part of COSATU here in KwaZulu Natal. Mr. Mkize, can you please just take us through why are you marching today? No, as we have said earlier, uh, that uh, the, the, the state of the economy of South Africa currently is not really on the side of uh, the poor people of this country. Uh, it's not uh, really favoring the workers of this country. We are told that uh, uh, by, uh, by institutions such as uh, World Bank, that we are the most unequal countries of the world in South Africa. What does that mean then? It means that uh, there are people who are competing uh, to have uh, uh, billions, and, but there are people also who are competing to be the most poorest in the, in, in the, in, 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 in the uh, grassroots. So it means that uh, the levels of inequality in our country uh, keep on rising than being addressed. The typical example, let's speak, is the question of government uh, authorizing the 3% for public office bearers who are politicians uh, and the judges. The very same judges when in 2021 we were challenging the government in reneging on the 2018 uh, 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 increase of public service. They said there is no man in this country, but the very same judges are being uh, receiving uh, are, uh, are receiving the uh, increase of 3%. We are saying that the public office bearers who are politicians who are elected by us, it's high time that they pledge solidarity with the poor people of this country. They must be able to say the money that is given to them, it must be given to the police, it must be given to teachers, it must be given to nurses and the doctors and the workers who are cleaning the hospitals, the workers who are sweeping the streets from the municipalities who are in a cold phase of service delivery so that those workers are able to render the, the service delivery to our poor people of our country than keep, it, keep on enriching themselves. This is what you are saying, that uh, there is something that government needs to do to cushion the workers uh, on the challenges that they are facing, on the increasing of uh, cost of living as opposed to what uh, comes to workers uh, from government, from the uh, uh, private sector. As we are saying that the issue of collective bargaining is also undermined. Workers and uh, employers, uh, companies, and even government are not willing to improve, uh, uh, improve conditions of workers in this country. The salaries of workers are being downgraded, the conditions of service are being uh, downgraded, and that situation can no longer be allowed to exist by us as government. Thank you so much, Mr. Mkize. I want to move to Mundu um, Masejo because they are also raising some important issues um, that they want the government and also the private sector to address. Um, I see Jamulo Sokela, who's part of Untu here in KwaZulu Natal. I want to bring him in because um, I want him to explain exactly why they're joining into this march. Jamulo, thank you so much for joining us. Take us through some of your grievances. Well, uh, one of our grievances is what is known in the uh, uh, public the privatization of Tama SOEs. And we as uh, UNTU, we are against privatization, we are against the selling of jobs which threatens the livelihood of South Africans. The, the problems of trusted are not resolved, but the groupings are selling the stake of trusted to one another to enrich their friends. Because I will tell you one thing, um, the problem of debt and port is congestion, of which Privatization is not what's going to solve that problem. Why that problem can be solved is to uh, develop the city of Deben. 
build more roads, expand roads so that the consignment can move quickly. Uh, Trust Act does not talk about what is, has happened that Japan ports have lost the status of being a gateway to Africa. And they are mentioning one of the things as threats, the ports of Baira in Mozambique. And then one will ask one question that how come then Mozambique, which was in the civil war from 19, 1972 up until 1992, have bypassed us and then have uh, remained as a threat to us in, in the space of uh, import and export business. So we are saying they must address the real issues. They have not even dealt with what was recommended on the uh, Zondo Commission. The corruption that is happening at Transnet, nothing, nobody has been called into books. So they are merely giving business to their friends so that the, the few can be richer and the rest will squander in poverty. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Masako, those are some of the grievances that Untu and also the affiliates of COSAT who are marching for today. We do understand that they'll be handing in a memorandum to the Prime of Kwazulu Natal and also the Mayor of Kwazulu um, in Durban, um, Policy Kaunda. All right, let's see Mluli live for us uh, for the Durban leg of this march. And earlier we had Aisha Ishmael uh, for the Cape Town leg.